Hi everybody, it's Amy at Crafty Cat and I'm here today to do an Arteza unboxing. Now, technically I have taken these items out of their original boxes because they came in four separate, uh, well, three boxes and one um, envelope type package. So um, I had to, you know, I can't have all these boxes on here and I also needed to see what I had because we had some difficulties with shipping and whatnot. <clears throat> so they're out of their original box but they haven't been opened or any of that yet. So, I'm gonna set the box down on the floor here. And we're just gonna kind of take out one thing at a time. So I got these Arteza um, 48 real brush pins. Um, they're the like watercolor brushes is what they are. So essentially, they're gonna work like, or the idea is they're like using a paintbrush, but uh, the color's already in them like a marker. So I got 48 of those, and it shows all the colors on the back, so let's take it out of this. And I'll just say that everything came very nicely packaged, in, you know, in boxes and safe and, you know, all that whole thing. So, um, let's see, got the little uh, plastic tops here, to, you know, those little stickers that hold the box closed so you know that you're getting a fresh set or whatever you want to say and then they come in little trays it looks like so I'm just going to take the trays out oh and it comes with one of the water um, brushes so you open this I have one similar to this but not maybe you open it oh it twists the opposite direction I would think and you pour water in here it's different from the one I have and then uh, you just screw that back on it's backwards <laughs> so anyway um, and then when you squeeze it just a little bit here in the middle a little bit of water will come into this brush and you can use it just like a watercolor uh, paintbrush and a lot of us use these like for um, napkins uh, to tear them it makes it a lot easier there's a lot of things you can use these for they're great or just to blend um, like markers or whatever <clears throat> so those are super great and then we have lots of colors here in this 48 set. So these appear to be the yellows, reds, oranges, pinks, that kind of thing. So a few browns. Here's more pinks, purple, um, blues. And we have like an aqua variations. Is that gray or white? That's crazy. I think it's white. I can't even imagine. That would be very cool though on, um, you know, darker papers. Uh, different, this is more the green selection of the aqua here. And then it goes into greens. And there's olives and all that. And then um, we have greens into browns, black, gray, a lighter gray. So that definitely must be the white. This is like a blue gray. And then down to black. So this is charcoal and this one's black. So those are awesome. I'm super excited. My daughter has a set of 12 um, of these Arteza pens, and we play with them every now and then. But I am no watercolor artist by any stretch of the imagination. So, like, whatever I do is something that really any novice would be able to do. And I'll we'll play with these together. It's just right now I'm doing the unboxing to show you guys kind of what they are. And what I'll do is on a piece of paper I'll mark all the different colors out so that we can see you know what the colors are of those <clears throat> so those are very nice and I know from experience that they work very well so super nice brush pins there all right so I got those and then I got a set of six of their premium uh, water brush pens and the cool part about this is we saw the one in the other package um, get in here tight had that everything's packaged very nicely like nice and tight you don't have to worry about things being lost or whatever um, the one that we were looking at had the brush pin with just the one tip these each have a different tip so there's multiple pen tips so they open like the other one you put the water right in the little well there it'll fill up this part and then they just screw right back on and when you're ready to use the water you just push 
and it even says there's like push buttons and it says push so you just squeeze them a little and you don't have to squeeze a lot and now um, the brush will fill up with water and this is a nice small fine brush so that's great because I only have one big one of my own and then the next size just a little bit bigger all the fine point brushes there and like I said I am no um, expert on these things I'm a crafter I'm not a trained artist so um, you know this is all I don't know like a lot of the technical terms but there's the wider fine point and then this one is a flat or a blunt brush and we'll play with these I just wanted to you know show you everything first and then that one's a little bit wider very soft bristles so this is really fun because like I said I do have the one oh, the only tricky part is going to be getting it back in there without messing up the bristles and then this is the the super big one and those just pull right off if you twist you're going to start to untwist the barrel so that one's a super wide uh, bristle brush there yep. squeeze it a little to try to get them in there okay so that's the six watercolor brushes you get oops this one goes down here there's the tiny one and this is the one that's a little bigger They're very nicely packaged nothing was in weird spots or anything and then I got the watercolor paper and there's 32 sheets and it comes in a two pack so you can see that's lots of watercolor paper and I think what I'm going to do first to start is to cut some into tags that we can play with but I just wanted you to see it. and it's very nicely packaged it's got corners this is the one that did come in um, the envelope but it appears you know that it shipped very well it, there were no problems with it because they did um, put the corner reinforcers on there and these are the 140 pound um, weight nine and a half or nine inches by 12 inches and that's 300 grams is what the weight is and it says smooth oh so there's two sides one side of the paper is smooth and the other side is textured so that's really nice because sometimes you want watercolor but you don't want uh, the texture and as you can see the sides nice and smooth I don't know if you can tell on the camera but this sides the textured regular sort of watercolor that does have a little bend in the corner but uh, that's the only one that I really see that's got a little bent so hopefully these ones didn't get bent yeah these ones all look good oh, that one's a little little dinged but um for my purposes this is fine because um like i said i'll probably be cutting them into tags and things like that mostly cards and stuff so that's the paper and then i also got these i haven't taken them out of here yet these are the um 72 iconic pens it's the fine line so if you want to do fine line drawings and I was thinking these would be fun I like to doodle and so these would be super fun to doodle with and also I will be using them with the watercolors because I have an idea of sort of what I want to do even though like I said I am a novice and so I probably will not use all the right techniques but um, you know I just do my my normal thing but anyway they have a, a fine nib on those and does it say it's the 0.4 is what the nib is on those so if you can see them but they're a super fine line marker and there's 72 colors which is so cool because this this is what I'm super excited about I mean I love these I'm very excited as well but I just love um, like I said I like to sit sometimes and just doodle and so these will be really fun to play with. I don't do a whole lot of like 
cute necessarily doodling, but I'll show you one of the doodles I've done recently. I can find it. Um, I might have to show you next time. I'm not sure where I put it. Yeah, I'll show you the next time. I don't know where I put it. But anyway. I, I do like to do it also. Those are awesome, and I'm very excited to use those. So, there's loads of colors, as you can tell. Blues and pinks and grays and all kinds of funness. So, I'm going to go um, cut some tags out of that lovely watercolor paper that we got, and then I will be right back and we'll do some playing. So, I'll see you in just a minute. Okay, hi, I'm back. Um, that video was a video that you guys were supposed to see the day I put out the video um, for Arteza. Uh, my sister brought it to my attention that <laughs> the first part wasn't on there and for some reason I thought I had put it on there. So instead of taking down the Arteza video and putting that on the front of it and then you know re-editing and doing the whole thing, I put it on the front of the one today just so you guys could see what all <clears throat> I got from Arteza. I figured that might be nice information to have. So uh, this is the result of um, Arteza. This is my new digi, and it's called Watercolor Doodle Ephemera because it's just ephemera. There's no, like, um, paper pages. I mean, it's all paper, but you know what I mean, to put in your journal. It's just ephemera, like tags and journaling cards and those kind of things. So it's just a fun little, I don't know, something if you guys are interested in it. So you'll get these tags and journaling cards with mushrooms, butterflies and things. And then there's these large tags, journaling card, uh, you know, just a little circle there with flowers and butterflies. And then this page, I printed these two on uh, card. It's not really thick cardstock, it's a lighter weight cardstock just because they're journaling cards and tags. So that way I don't have to back them if I don't want to. Um, this page I did print on just regular copy paper. And what I thought you could probably do with this if you wanted to is use it like uh, to decorate with, which I'll do today, like to, you know, cover an envelope or um, you could print it onto transparency paper and I did do some of that as well. <clears throat> and use it, you know, just portions of it, like you could even, you know, do this kind of thing with transparency and make a pocket out of it or, you know, how, whatever. You can make more tags, you could make circles, you can make an envelope, all kinds of stuff, okay? And so then I also took that same image and put it onto a large, um, just a pocket, you know, top loading pocket. Kind of like a coin envelope, but it doesn't have the flap that closes over the top, but essentially the same thing. And then I added this to the kit just because it's, you know, the happy flowers and the colors and stuff. I thought they went well together. This is a piece of embroidery that I own. So I scanned it and put that in there as well, just for a little fun bonus, I guess. <clears throat> So I thought we could play around with that stuff today and so I have this um, craft envelope and you can get these at Michael's and they um, very often come with just the postcard with them and sometimes I just don't know what to do with those because um, I don't make very many you know cards that are like postcards I guess. So um, I thought you could attach it like those flips that Rachel at Roxy Creation makes all the time to put in a journal. So you can either attach it or you could paper clip it onto a page or whatever. And then here's another one of the postcards to put inside. So I thought we could play with that and that way we could see how we like this digi. So I hope you're all having a wonderful day. It's a pretty nice day here. So here's uh, the pocket on transparency paper which I think is fun because then you can see, you know, see through it. So, and then I also did this piece so that, you know, if you wanted that same idea of like making a little frame and you could use different size frames and whatever. But anyway, I thought that would be fun. <clears throat> so I think what we'll do, since there's not a lot of other papers that go with this kit, I'm going to use the um, embroidery and then I think I'm going to use some of Taylor made journals, uh, grungy vintage wallpaper, and I can't remember the number on this one. I think 
I think it's one, but I'm not sure. So I'll put it in my description box below this video. So right below the video, it either says more info or it has a little gray white arrow that you can click on and you know it's pointing down so it brings down the description box that has all the information like what I used and where you can get it and a lot of times there's just links that you can click on to go wherever so <clears throat> just in case we have some new people and thank you to all my new subscribers I really appreciate you guys that's so awesome I can't believe the amount of people that watch my channel it's awesome I just blows me away to even think about it so I thank you so much because I never dreamed I would have that many subscribers so I think the first thing I'm going to do is cut this envelope the top off to make it the same size as the uh, postcard this postcard is a completely different color than the envelope and the um, the other one it's just craft paper so I guess that's the trick and it doesn't have to be like exact I just want to get them a little bit closer to the same size and then that way I'll have a pocket at the top instead of um, you know right here so we'll just cover this with other paper and then that will be that so yeah you guys are doing good it's been pretty nice around here it's been warm but not too warm it's supposed to be hot tomorrow so we'll see how how hot it gets but I'm just gonna put a little uh, dot of glue there just to hold this closed so it could you know flop and open <clears throat> but you don't want to seal your you know your top pocket so just put a little little dab so I think what I'll do first is attach this so that we can cover the flap when we cover the rest of the envelope so I'm just gonna go all along here so yeah I don't know what in the world I was doing the other day when I put that video together for Arteza well it for one thing it was taking my computer forever to like um, upload it to YouTube and then you know I was emailing back and forth with Arteza so I don't know it just was one of those days I guess where my brain was not attached to the rest of my body or something but anyway um, it didn't get on there but I wanted you guys to see what I got I mean that was kind of the whole point right so anyway it's envelope this just goes to show you how these are not square I mean I, I could have glued it crooked too but it's just kind of funny when you see it I tend to trust the little card more but I want them to be the same size all right so let's get that covered yeah I just liked these particular wallpapers of hers to put on here I could also put that image this one maybe we'll put this one on the front just so that you know use it somewhere so I get my cutter and I'm just gonna cut this was just where the watercolor paper was that's why it's leaving that line off at five I'm gonna lose some of my little blue flowers so I think I'm gonna try to keep at least a couple of those over on this side and then I'll trim it down a little more because there's still some white over here <clears throat> I'm just trying not to pop all the flowers off you know it's still a little bit too wide do that. Sometimes these um, cutters like catch if there's anything in the track and then plus mine's not working great. That's one thing that drives me crazy about those. These scissors will probably be able to cut the top portion off anyway but 
Yeah, because then they ding up your paper, you know. Yeah, I've, I'd have to, um, I have to clean out the track of this pretty often. And thin paper is the worst. Like if it's thin or it's an old book page, forget it. You cannot cut it at all with that. How long is this now? About seven. And I don't mind cutting off the stems, which you probably can't really see, but anyway, cutting off the little stems of the flowers because it's not very exciting. All right, and I am going to ink that a little bit. We're going to have a disaster. And I did ink around the tags before I scanned them, so they are inked. But um, you may want to ink a little bit more because it is on white watercolor paper. So. I had loads of fun doing these and I love those watercolor markers they're awesome and the fine liners I like those too I thought those were going to be my most favorite but I've been having fun with the watercolor ones and the different size um, brushes that hold the water those are great it's nice to have some different sizes I've only had you know like the one I was using Originally, Is this the side the yeah. Just make sure I don't do it upside down. So I'm just checking to I'm sure that was the opening end because I have been known to do that. I'm sure a lot of you can attest to that. Need a book a book to glue on. I went out and watered and the wind's blowing so I feel like my hair is like in my mouth in my eyes and you know just everywhere it's not supposed to be like it does but yeah thank you for all your kind comments on my watercoloring I'm no professional for sure but I just thought these might be kind of fun to play with just they're just happy and doodly so I thought people might might want to have them. It does not want to go down right for some reason. Oh, crooked. Oh, brother. One thing, I got way too much glue on there. I don't have a towel or a paper towel. Anything handy. My old beat up towels. Yeah, I got way carried away with the glue there. And therefore got everything crooked. See all the glue coming out? What I was doing. Jeez. Oh, my paper's a little big too, still. So. My goodness. I got a glob on here. Just making a mess. 
it's kind of hot today, so um, I think my glue is a little softer than usual, so I got a little crazy. I mean, I do that anyway sometimes, but you know. So let's trim this, since I clearly did not cut it very well. So yeah, I thought this was kind of just a fun use of these, because like I said, sometimes I don't know what to do with these postcards. I don't know why, they're just rectangles of craft cardstock. I could use them for anything, but they always seem like a something that just sits around my craft area and I don't use, so. I always think I have to save them to go with the envelopes and stuff like that, I guess. I don't know. And then half the time I just end up using up the envelopes. And not them. So there you go. Cut that edge so now it wasn't inked. Alright, so... Inside here... I'm going to cover this. I was thinking of putting... I can find it somewhere I have the vellum yes I think I'm gonna put this pocket here on this envelope but we need to back it with something but I don't want anything real uh, dark back there so I think I'm gonna use a piece of this from tailor-made journals since I think I'm just gonna tear instead of trying to cut with the cutter My daughter was off to the lake today with her friends. I get to go play around in the water. They all have, uh, well a lot of her friends are going to the same college she's going to and um, so tomorrow they, a bunch of them have orientation for that so they wanted to go play today. forgot to put that on the front of it, I guess. Okay, I won't push so hard this time. <laughs> I have no idea what I did. That was crazy. Yeah, it's a lot softer because it's just like goop. It's almost gone, this one. Fingers stick into it. Oh, and I did what I'm not supposed to do. Oh my gosh, everybody, I apologize. If I got any dingier. I don't want glue right there. <laughs> okay, so what I'm going to do is just let that dry because I don't want I don't want glue there. And I realized I didn't glue this down all the way either. I just glued the top of the flap. So we're going to cut out our envelope. I do that almost every time when I do these open envelopes like that because I, for some reason I just that habit of gluing the whole piece of paper and I just do it. All right, so let's cut this out, which if you don't like the cutting, go ahead and fast forward because I know it's boring. But I didn't get a chance because I just got this done this morning, so I wanted to get on and play. And the way I put my transparency paper through the um, printer, because it will just eat it a lot of the time, 
is um, I glue it, and you can kind of see the glue a little bit there. This will be folded back, though, and you, you won't really be able to see it anyway. But um, I just put a little bit of glue stick at the top of a piece of copy paper and then stick the transparency paper to those spots. That way, when the computer grabs, or the computer, the printer grabs the um, copy paper, you know, your transparency paper will go with it. But the whole thing's not stuck down, like, you know, because imagine if. I know some people can use that spray, that adhesive spray, but I have not had luck with that because then the whole back of my transparency paper kind of looks, you know, like that. So, obviously it's not a perfect system because you get some, a few spots, but if you have a printer like mine and I have an Epson Eco Tank, um, it just really likes to eat it <laughs> or it just will pick it up and spit it out and then print on the next piece of paper underneath you and it'll keep doing it if it's transparency paper so it's like it just won't run it through it won't print on it by itself so. and I know every printer is different so if you have luck with that then you know great but I just don't all right, just trying to keep my inking a little bit there. I am going to put a little more in here just because it, I never cut it perfectly with that. I'm going to fold these as best we can to try to line it up. And I did not. And these aren't the, these flaps aren't the exact same size, so they're not going to fold in the same amount. But I knew it wasn't that big of an issue because you're going to um, cover the or you know you'll have it glued down or whatever. It's still overlapping the other one, so it's fine. told my daughter this morning when I was making the original template, I'm like, I cannot fold straight for anything. She was laughing at me. She thinks I'm a goofball anyway. Doing all this all the time. She has finally picked a minor, that, or a major I mean, not that she has to right now anyway, but it's nice if you at least have some sort of direction to go in. She's going to do graphic design unless she decides to change her mind, which is possible. But I'm hoping she doesn't just so that she doesn't have to keep starting over, basically. She has too many <laughs> vastly different interests. <laughs> I'll just say it that way. <laughs> so it makes it a little bit... Um, Crazy. Okay, this is dry now, so we can try this again without gluing close the envelope. So what I'm going to do is put the glue on here. That's always the best advice I can say, but I never listen to it. So if you put the glue directly onto the envelope, then you will see the opening, and no, you don't want to glue that. And I will put a little along the edge once I figure out exactly where this is going to end up. So just do it right the first time, unlike me, and then you'll have, <laughs> you'll have it right where you need it. Okay. So I'm just going to take my art glitter glue and run a bead just right along in here so that this closes this envelope up on this side. And that way you'll have an open pocket instead of gluing it closed. And I'll probably have to put a thumb hole. I think I've done enough of these by now that I would be able to do it without making mistakes, but nope. 
No can do. Okay, so then we'll have this piece that will go right in here. Hopefully, except, yeah, I might have to trim a little bit because I did close it over here, so it's now it's a different size than the original would have been. strip off because the rest of it should be fine. Maybe. Oh my goodness. There it goes. Okay. Let's see if we can get a thumb hole in here to make that easier to grab a hold of. You may have to do the whole thing but try. If my thing will work here. Likes to fight me. Okay. Put this back in here. Alright, and then I want to put a pocket right here so that I can put some of the smaller tags there as well. And we're going to glue this right here. So I'm going to do that just by, I'm not going to cover the whole back, but I am going to go all the way up and across because I don't want it to be another pocket because it's vellum. I don't think that it will hold, you know, a whole bunch of stuff, so... I don't think it has to be all completely glued everywhere. this back here. So this is another piece of tailor-made journal paper. This one I can put glue all over the back of. I didn't make mistakes, you guys wouldn't know what to do. You'd be like, oh my gosh, is she okay? Is she feeling well? Oops. It really doesn't even matter how far this goes down because um, it's going to be covered by a pocket down at the bottom. Uh, of course that's where all the cool design is, so maybe I'm going to turn it this way because I don't think it really matters which direction it goes because I want to see the flowers. I mean I can tell that if you had a whole wall of it, obviously this would be the top, but I think for our purposes it will be fine. covered. I could just scoot it up, I guess. I could cut off. And then just do the pocket down here. That would work. So let's just take off these top flowers. Zip. Eight. 
Okay, and I'm not sure what I'm going to make a pocket out of yet, but I'll figure that out. Oops, I need to use up this one. Kind of want... It's a little bit thicker, so maybe it'll... I think I might just use a piece of manila file folder. It's just cream cardstock. That would probably work. And we can cover it with whatever we want. And I think I'll make some little um, side flaps so that it. these things upside down. I think that's just my brain is upside down so I automatically turn everything else upside down. Okay. And it doesn't have to be big. You can make these little gussety things. However, I don't, you know, I don't need a ton of room, but sometimes when you glue the flaps straight down, um, it just, I think this was five. It's just too tight, like you can only put like one, yeah, it's five, um, thing in there. So I need to have it at this quarter and a quarter. Should be good right there. Cut it there and then score it again at a quarter. And I think that's right. Let's see. That might be a little off still. So. This is me trying to do math. It's, it's a scary, it's a scary thing to behold. Screen yet. <laughs> okay, that was way harder than it had to be. Okay, that'll work. Just score these a little bit more. How what are we at? Thirty three minutes. We're doing okay. Not fabulous, but okay. Might have to be a tiny bit shorter. Let's cut it at three and a half. And now it'll probably be too short and it won't reach the wallpaper, right? Oh no, yay. Okay, we're gonna put a thumb hole. Or why don't we wait till we cover it? Yeah. Okay. I kind of want those, that line of flowers in the middle, so I think I will 
I'll tear it here. And there's some lines in the paper, which is very helpful. And then I will tear it for here. the flowers on there, at least one batch of them, right? Let's get them down just a little. So once I tear the bottom off, oopsie, you have to actually hold it where the paper is. Got it. So we're gonna have a big birthday party for my son this next week. So maybe MIA a few days, but that's what I'll be doing. He is turning 16. I cannot believe it. And we're also going to go sometime next week and do his driver's um, license test and see how that goes. <laughs> I didn't do real great with that when I was 16. Parallel parking and I are not friends, so it's uh, definitely not my thing. Driving's fine. It's just parking. I remember my grandfather out with uh, cones. He would put cones out on the road for me, and he tried so hard to teach me to do that. <laughs> I don't know why I have such a hard time with that. That is just a uh, brain malfunction thing. But yes, I'm hoping that he will do much better than I did the first go round. My daughter got hers first go, so I'm hoping. But yeah, it's hard to believe that he's that age already. And so on our, we have this, um, like Alexa thing that has weather and, you know, it pops up pictures throughout the day and whatever, and it'll do pictures from that year, whatever year. So it, they keep popping up with his birthday around the time of his birthday all through his life and there it's fun to sit and see all those and my nephew's coming for a visit this weekend and we have friends coming from the sort of Seattle area, not quite to Seattle, it's Washington State, but yeah. So that'll be good to see all them. We're just going to be busy again. It's like it was real boring for a while, and now it's like things are picking up. At least in our area. I know they aren't everywhere, but hopefully soon everybody will be kind of back to some sort of semblance of whatever normal is. Okay, so I thought in that shorter pocket, obviously we could put some of the shorter stuff. Like these mushroom cards. And these are all the originals that are scanned in, so um, that's why sometimes you'll see like a shadow above the tag, but you can just trim that off. We didn't do, we just, you know, got them straight on the page and things like that as much as we could with the computer and formatting and all that. I don't totally get, but... 
they're not computer generated is what I'm trying to say. In there, but I'll probably ink it a little more. I want some of the white kind of knocked down a bit. Let's do this big red mushroom. I don't know if we'll get this whole thing done, but you'll get you get the idea anyway. And thank you to Arteza because I really have enjoyed playing with their supplies and they're all very nice in my opinion. I think they're great. Well, they're the nicest like watercolor and those fine liners that I've ever had. So I have no complaints. Of course, I'm not like trained in art or anything and haven't used a lot of fancy stuff, but I like them. I think they're great. just be a, a happy little thing. We could do something like this too. But I know like Gail Agostinelli has been doing like a really eclectic sort of journal which I really kind of want to do that just all kinds of different stuff because sometimes I feel like I get in those um, ruts of everything having to match and all that and I really kind of like that look for a junk journal when it's all you know different and um, so these would be super fun in a journal like that because they wouldn't since there isn't paper just like it or whatever I think it would be a lot of fun this big tag to go in our this pocket and then I don't know yet what I'm going to do with that larger like, journaling card or whatever So yeah, if you're interested, I'll have a link to this in my description box. And it's in my Etsy, so if you want to check it out. Okay, so I was thinking we could put this, but then it's going to cover that. as like another little tuck, but yeah, it's going to cover that. What about one of these butterfly circles as a little tuck? These are the ones that had that heart die cut that I used, and then I was like, oh, that's not going to work because copyright, duh. So we just did circles around them. With the computer. Yeah. This is where I stink. I wish I had uh, a punch this size. what the ink's for though, right? I don't know what I would do if I didn't have the ink to fix, <laughs> make stuff look a little bit better when I cut it. Because <laughs> I stink at that. Okay. So yeah, that would work just as a little tuck. Because I want to put one of these other mushrooms in there. I think I'll go with this one since otherwise it's just like blue, blue, blue. It's kind of fun doing your own like uh, images because then you don't have to stress about finding all the copyright information and making sure it's all good and you know sometimes it's hard and I'll be looking forever for images that 
you know, I want and I can't find and I don't know. I wish I could. was like a lot more talented at drawing and stuff because then I would just do my own stuff. It's much easier. I mean, I can draw some simple things like these, but people and that is a whole other ball of wax for sure. And these are already white on the back, so that's nice. I end up inking them a little in the end, but for now they are fine. And then we'll put our little butterfly circle. Okay, which side am I putting glue on? Just along the edge, just to make a tuck. Just a little bit. Okay, there's that, and then we have this one. Is it in there? <laughs> I'm like, is there a card in there? Oh, did I glue it in there? How much more of that? I did. Oh my goodness, Amy. Seriously. How many defugalies, as Gail would say, can a person have in one day? A lot, apparently. Okay, so what should we put on that? Let's see. Oh, let's put this on there. It's cool embroidery. How not do I want to go this way? Yeah, maybe this way's better. I love old embroideries. I just cannot believe people. <laughs> I know there's still people that can embroider really well. I'm just not one of them. What are we at? 46. Let's probably get this on here anyway. Exactly, get that center, did I? Dipped it in the lid again. That's another one that's pretty, pretty white. That's probably why they went so well together, the Embroidery and the watercolor. The colors are also similar. Hey, son. Hi. How are you? Good. What you doing? Uh -huh. I don't know. Look. Why not? You like that vellum pocket? Yeah, the, the transparent. That's what that means, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he thought the vellum pockets were kind of cool. They were sitting on the table. He decided to stay here with me today. <laughs> He's been having trouble with his um, eyes with the allergies, and then I got the wrong contact solution. It's just been a whole it's been a whole thing, and so he was not really in the mood to go be outside and all that. All right, I feel like it needs something across here. Like, I wonder if it would go in and out of the pocket if we put some kind of trim on there. Probably not. I will put some kind of something up there, but this is from Peggy. I love this pink, all this pink stuff on here. 
This one might work because we could glue it down flat enough. Boy, it would have been really great if I had got that centered, huh? Let's go. Oh my goodness, Amy. Get it together, would you? Ish. All right, let's use our art glitter glue. Yeah, so we're gonna, he's gonna have a, it's called Roaring Springs here, you know, those water park slide whatever places. <laughs> That's what our is called, is Roaring Springs. So we're gonna go there and then they're gonna come over here, have dinner and stuff, and then they're gonna watch a movie outside. Because we have a projector. So be a fun birthday. That's probably going to drive me crazy that that's crooked. Off center. But I don't know I can do that now. I kind of think I need these corners rounded because I feel like they're just going to keep getting stuck over and over and I got that crooked too. Ay, ay, ay. Boy, I shouldn't have even turned on the camera today, I'm pretty sure. hanging over and then I turn it over and it really isn't. There we go. And then I'll put something up at the top, um, lace or a piece of fabric or something to grab a hold of and pull it in and out. I think that's kind of fun and it needs a little something else on here too and I'm just not sure what yet. These are some quotes from uh, medieval Mirage, and I was just thinking one of those would look kind of cool on there. I don't know if I have more choices. Let's see. This is in her Ode to Jane, the one I'm doing the journal. Just reading them. I think I like this one. There is nothing I would not do for those who are really my friends. I have no notion of loving people by halves. It is not my nature. That one's cute. This would be a good happy mail type thing. Fit there great though. Hmm. That might not work. I don't know. I think I'll have to wait until I find something that I feel like fits. It just doesn't fit great. It could go like down here, but there's still that space that's bugging me up there. Like it just needs something. What if we... A different butterfly. Those don't really go. Even if I cut this out, I don't think, I think it's too big. Yeah, it is way too big. Even if I cut it out.
That's not long enough. I might just um, like print out another piece of Gail's trim and put it up there. I think I'll do that. So um, I'm just going to go ahead and stop there. But I mean, you guys get the idea. You can decorate them as, as much as you want, as little as you want, whatever. So I hope you all have an awesome evening. And thank you again to all of you because it's just been amazing. I mean, I just can't believe it. So I hope you have a wonderful evening and we will chat again soon. Bye-bye.